Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video, I'm going to talk about URXVT, which is um, a terminal emulator, which of course I use. And I get so many questions about this because a lot of people have, there are so many terminal emulators to choose from, but I happen to think that URXVT is by far the best. Uh, I definitely recommend it. And people are always asking about my configuration about it because you know, there's so many different things you can do with this thing. But um, anyway, so l let me just introduce you to the terminal. Here it is. Um, uh, I'm actually going to... Uh, so one of the reasons I should say that I use URXVT is it's pretty robust generally, but it handles Ranger image previews really well. Um, so as you can see, images come out pretty crisp without much flickering or anything like that. Um, so this is one of the reasons I switched... I used to use URXVT, then I switched to Termite, but Termite has a lot of problems with this kind of stuff. URXVT is a lot more consistent with getting image previews and Ranger and uh, W3EM and all the other programs that use them. So that's one of the practical reasons I switched. But URXVT has so many little things that you wouldn't know about that I'm always discovering that you know are worth looking at. So in this video, I'm going to talk about something, uh, some of them, in addition to basic configuration and URXVT. Okay, so I should say if you install URXVT, RxVT and just open it, it's going to look like this little puny, ugly white window that is just like, you know, there's illegible font, you can't, you know, it's it's sort of annoying. Um, but if you want to go ahead and start configuring it, um, X, uh, well, URxVT uses X resources and X defaults for configuration. Now, if you don't know what those files are on Linux, they are files where uh, your X server or Really, they, they are not program-specific configuration files. They're, you put configurations there that multiple programs might be looking at. They're general properties of your X server, so to speak. So X defaults is the sort of default one, but a lot of people use X resources now. I use X defaults. Uh, you just have to run an X, extra command if you want to do X resources. So I just throw them in X defaults. So you can complain about you know why that's a bad idea, but. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll just show you the configuration. So if you open it up, again, these, these uh, you know, variables that I define in this file, they're not just specific to URXVT, they apply to other programs as well. So you'll see I have a foreground, a cursor color, uh, and a whole bunch of different colors defined here. Uh, these are all general uh, configuration, I guess, settings that you can set for different programs. URXVT happens to look at these. Uh, now, if you saw my video on Pywall, uh, a couple months ago. I actually use Pywall a lot now, and it'll sometimes overwrite these settings. Uh, I, in fact, I'm using it right now. But just know that this is where the settings usually are, and you can copy mine and they're gonna work fine. I'll put a link to mine in the uh, description. I'll also say a lot of people ask me about this, especially on i3. One thing about URXVT is that it has a bunch of trouble doing um, you know, transparency, fake transparency or stuff like that. You'll see that I do have transparency right now. Um, how you have to do that is by setting a background color, but with uh, this thing here, this 90, that's the opacity setting, so I'm at 90% opacity. Um, I can change this to say be 70%, uh, and then if you open up another terminal, you, you see that it's more transparent. Um, I usually have to have mine pretty opaque because I do video tutorials, but you know, you could probably do less. Um, but this is where you set this setting, and you have to run Compton in order for URXVT to be transparent if you're running i3. That's just one annoying, you know, people ask me about this all the time, but this is how you do it. You have to have, um, you know, Compton on i3. That's how you do it. But if you don't use i3, I think uh, URXVT has its own default. Um, so you can define other things here, font, stuff like that. You can have a scroll bar if you want. I don't. I like having a nice, ugly magenta cursor so I don't lose it. Um, but if you want to see all the different things that you can set in URXVT, all you have to do is type in URXVT and then dash dash help. And that'll spit out all the different variables that you can define. And there are actually a lot of them. Uh, I have, I've only toyed around with a small subset of these. So you can check them out yourself. Um, there's a lot that you can do. Um, but the real magic in URXVT isn't necessarily the settings that are there by default. Uh, they're the settings that you can put in. Uh, specifically, URXVT can use Perl scripts to um, basically have a bunch of extra functionality. And you'll see here I actually have, uh, you can you know call different Perl scripts. Actually, I should tell you how to uh, install those first. So there's a package that is, uh, what is it called? I think it's... Um, URXVT Pearls. I think that's it. Uh, what's my password on this computer? Is it bad that I have to remember? 
Oh god. Awkward. Okay, so URXVT Pearls, I have it installed. If you install this, the, this gives you a lot of different uh, packages that you can use, Perl packages, scripts that you can use on URXVT. I already have this installed. Um, now, three of them I have here. Resize font is something different, but the th uh, the other three, so matcher, URL select, and keyboard select, and I have the settings for them down here. Uh, let me explain what these do. Matcher uh, makes it so you can click on links in URXVT, which is not by default, um, but uh, if you have that, you can say, okay, this is the, you know, you can say, I want the first mouse button to click on them, and then I want them to open in whatever XDG open tells them to. So in my case, it would be cube browser if I open one of these by clicking. So that's what Matcher does. The more interesting ones are URL select and keyboard select. Uh, let me show you how those work, because they're pretty cool. Uh, and this is a functionality that a lot of terminals can't really have, uh, or they have them, but they have them poorly. Um, so I'm going to cat out uh, the code to my website, so index.php. Um, actually, I should probably make that smaller. So you'll see, this is just my home page, and you'll see that there are different links on this page. Now, that it's not super important here, but just know that when you're using a terminal, there are a lot of times when you have links that you want to click on or, or select or, you know, yank or something like that, copy. Um, so URL select makes it so URXVT automatically can sync URLs or uh, seek URLs. So if I type alt U, you'll see that the last URL is not now highlighted. So what I can do now is I can go up or down using either the up or down arrows or Vim keys, so like K and J, and I can move through all the different links. And I have two options on each one of them, or at least two options. One is, let's say, you know, I want to go to that, that website. I could just press enter, uh, and that will bring it up in whatever my default browser is. So you see, uh, now this uh, link has been brought up, okay? Um, the other option is, I, let's say I just want to uh, copy this. I can just press Y for yank. Um, now, if you want to paste something in URXVT, I should say uh, you just type uh, shift and then insert. Okay, so that's the thing I just copied out. So linguisticsuga.edu. Um, so this is really convenient. You use this all the time. And in fact, there are a lot of programs, especially MUT or NewsButer or NewsBoat, whatever it calls itself now. There are a lot of programs that don't have a URL copy by default, but because URXVT has this, you can take advantage of it even in a program. You don't need this actual prompt, mind you. You can be using some other program and it just can be some link anywhere on the terminal and you can copy that and you know do whatever you want with it. So that is a really nice tool to have. Uh, use it all the time. Um, in addition to that, so the other one uh, I noted was keyboard select. So this is another cool one. Um, so, uh, oh, and I should say all the, the keyboard settings for this. So I put, uh, where is it? Right, so I said that M, uh, alt U is activate the URL select. You can reset that to whatever you want here. Uh, I have it set to M U, alt U. Um, I all, and so the other one I'm going to talk about is uh, alt escape for keyboard select. And let me show you how that works. And I'm going to turn on screen key for this just to make it super clear. Um, so if I press alt and then escape, I'm now in a kind of Vim mode, I guess you could think of it. And I can move up in here with Vim-like keys, uh, HJKL. Uh, I can, you know, copy things, or I can uh, yank things or highlight them. So I'm in a kind of visual mode. Uh, I'll Y to yank that. Uh, when I'm done, I can press Escape. And then I, again, I can press uh, Shift Insert to just insert that text. Um, so this is a pretty convenient thing to have generally. Again, it, it, you don't just have to be in a prompt when you use this. It could be any program that's running in URXVT. You can use this uh, ability to just move around and select things, copy them, then maybe open a file, throw it in there, or something like that. It's something that's extremely convenient to have. And again, a lot of terminals just don't have this, or you have to use your mouse, which can copy a bunch of things that you don't want and it's just sort of a pain. So this is the better solution. Um, so keyboard select and URL select. These are things that it's hard to live without at this point. Um, the last little thing uh, about URXVT or the last little plug-in thing I have is resize font. This doesn't come with URXVT pearls, I don't think. I, I know it's a separate... Um, uh, well, let me go ahead and, sh well, no, I'll, I'll install it first. It's in the AUR. It's RX URXVT resize font git. 
I think. Let me see if it pops up. I don't want to tell you wrong. Yes, okay. Um, so that's it. So resize font again. Um, but it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You can just set bindings to make your font bigger or smaller. So mine, I have control K and control J. So sort of Vim-like keys. And that just makes your font bigger or smaller. Uh, and this is super convenient. I mean, I need this in basically every video because, you know, people always, if you record a video at normal, you know, font size, everyone will complain. Oh God, I can't read it. It needs to be bigger. Um, so this is a really, really nice thing to have. Um, so, uh, uh, but yeah, you can also set the keyboard shortcuts to it to whatever you want. So I have uh, control J, control K. You can have, you know, control. You can have control whatever you want, except for I accidentally pressed the key binding that was uh, kill FFmpeg. So <laughs> I have to redo the last part of the video, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're doing it live. Um, so yeah, but anyway, that that is honestly about it. Um, so URXVT, there's so many Perl scripts that you can throw in this thing, so many other things you can do. It looks like this ugly mess when you install it, but again, since it uses X resources and X defaults, you can really get a configuration that jives with your system. Again, if you are just thinking about trying this thing out, I recommend you to look at the kind of things that you can configure by typing in URXVT help and getting all the different variables you can set. Um, because there's honestly, like I've been using this terminal for a couple months and I feel like I've only gotten so deep into it, but I, I really have a configuration I like. So um, check, check it out, check URXVT out, check the documentation out, check it all out. Uh, but anyway, that's about it. So I'll see you guys next time. Hope you, hope you learned something because people have been asking for this video for a while. But um, anyway, that's URXVT. See you guys next time.